there's something that transcends all religious activity. And remember how we closed last week? We should go back there again. Uh, welcome here today. The Word of God. I just love the Word of God. But in Titus, uh, I, just to review last week, in the book of Titus, we read in chapter 2, verse 13. And by the way, uh, just to make it clear, we stand on the Word of God here. Right? That's our foundation. Yes. That's it. We don't have other books that we add to this or anything else. This is our foundation. And so Titus says, and we've been preaching on grace, and that grace is not a pass to sin, it's a power to live above sin. Right? It is not a leniency, it's a love for Jesus that grace brings. It's a life that it does. And so grace is so misunderstood, and Paul was addressing that. I'm so glad for the grace of God because it brings me everything. Yep. It brings me salvation, it brings me growth, it brings me sanctification. It's the grace of God. And it brings them constant, His mercy is new every morning. But so we were talking on grace, so we turned to Titus last week. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people. And then also, it's not only saving grace, instructing us to deny godlessness. And worldly lust and to live in a sensible, righteous, and godly way in the present age. So Paul is saying to Titus, grace is not only bringing you salvation, it helps you to live a new lifestyle. Amen. You can be changed. Yes. You see, it, it, the world doesn't need to know that we're all just crippled all the time and we'll never get any better. They want to know that something can change in their lives, and it's the grace of God that will change. If they want to be unchanged, they can just go to a regular therapist and sit there for three or four years. But Jesus Christ will change the direction of a life. Yes. Yes. And not only the direction, the destination. Yes. For by grace you've been saved. If you think you're saved today and it wasn't grace, I have news for you. You're not saved. That's right. If you think that you got there because you just did better than you did last year, that's not what saves you. There is nothing you could do that can save you except the blood of Jesus. Amen. So by grace you're saved and you have a new direction. And the reason you have a new direction because suddenly God turns you around because you have a new destination. And it's to be with Him forever and ever. Oh. You have a great destination in front of you if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior. It's saving power and it instructs for righteousness. And verse 14, he gave himself, I have this gets to my favorite part, but they're all my favorite part. He gave himself for us to redeem us from lawlessness and to cleanse for himself a people for his own possession eager to do good works. In other words, you're so changed in your mind that he, he picks you up, he cleans you off, and he says, you're mine. You belong to me. And all of a sudden, we're eager to do good works. Now listen, after we've received the grace of God, we're eager to do good works, but good works can never get you to the grace of God. It doesn't matter how good. If, if your goodness could get there, somebody else is a little better than you, or when you weren't so good, you wouldn't have a chance. But His grace will keep you from falling. Do you know that? Yes. And so He says, but here's, the, here's my favorite part. A people for His own possession, here's the good words. My version does not have the best translation of people. A lot of them don't. It's really... The people is a peculiar people in, in the New King James or King James. It goes something like that. But here is what it means. <laughs> I looked up again, and that's how we closed last week. It said beyond normal. <laughs> it's a, a people that are beyond normal. You know, if you just say, well, I'm, I'm just normal. Well, that's what the world is. Normal, whatever's going on, you know, the norms of society. As long as I just fit in with society. But that's not what this word is. This says you're beyond normal. Amen. You know, you no longer love what the world loves. You no longer saturate in what the world saturates in. You're beyond normal. You've got a new level of living. And that's why I said, I really liked when I found that verse in the Greek, the word, 
I, I really liked it because people have said for some years now, he's not normal. That Sam is not normal. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Would you like to be abnormal? Amen. I want an abnormal church so that a normal people who want to change will come yes. to be made abnormal. You know that abnormal? It's I'm only human. Don't. Don't, please don't use that one on I me. Mean, what are you expecting from us? I'm only human. You are not only human. If you've received Christ, you are human that is the house of God Almighty and the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You're a human that has Jesus dwelling inside of you. Amen. And that changes everything. They say, Sam, I, I just can't help it. I just... This is what I am. You're reading the wrong Bible. That's right. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Yeah, that's Amen. Right. You think that's not a message for the world to hear? So he says, a people of an abnormal people for his possession. And here's how I close, and then we'll move on a little bit. <laughs> possession. Remember what I said? I want to be possessed. I said in a culture that has so much satanic possession and oppression and depression, Jesus says, I want to possess you. Oh, possess me, Jesus. Hey, you know what's wrong with that guy? You know what's wrong with that woman? She's possessed. <laughs> He's possessed. Yes, by Jesus. Yes. Do you want to know who was possessed? Jesus. Do you know what he said? They got mad at him a lot. The religious establishment was always upset with Jesus. He said, I can't help it, I'm possessed. He said, why are you mad at me? I didn't do that. The Father working in me did it. Why are you mad at me? I did not say that. The Father said it. What? He said, I do nothing. The Son does nothing except the Father tells him. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean by possession. I, I, you remember I posted that last week, something about that? In a culture that is so demon-possessed and so much demon activity, we need a church that's Jesus-possessed and Jesus activity going on. Amen. I am believing that a phenomenal revival can hit this land. I'm believing because it is so dark right now in our times that I might not be the brightest bulb on the tree, but I can shine bright in a dark world. Yeah. And so can you. You know what I like about the old children's course? It says, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. You know what I like about that song? Little. You have no excuse. It's not about how big your light is. It's that you're a light. And you let it shine. However you feel you are. So anyway, that's the, that's the review of last week. So <clears throat> I want to go on. And I'm actually just going to refer. You don't have to turn in your Bibles yet. Because I am going to go to Romans again. Romans 6. But I want to I say this. The big difference between his performance and... And your performance is what is sourcing you. What are you sourced by? Are you sourced by him? Or are you sourced by the best I can do? Because you know what my Bible says? When you say, I'm just doing the best I can, I want to introduce you to a God who says, I can do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think. I want you to know that God. Oh, he can do more. And so, Acts 4.33, I was we're still on the theme of grace. Acts 4.33, it says, with great power, are you hearing this? With great power, the apostles were giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was on all of them. Grace and power go hand in hand. What did Jesus say? 
You will receive power after the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you will be my witnesses under the ends of the earth. And so, maybe the missing element is the Holy Spirit at work. And so, great grace, great power. Acts 5.12 says this, Many signs and wonders were being done among the people through the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's colonnade. And listen, many people were being brought that had many needs. This is going to sound strange, and I don't think I have time to explain it or even time to fully understand it. I just want to enjoy it. You know what? You actually don't have to analyze everything. You can just enjoy it. You know? I mean, I would not get very far if I got in my car and said, how does this really work? How does that engine fire? I mean, Dave Lee might help me, but I don't know what I'm doing. And I'm going, uh, I need to understand all about this car before I drive. Well, good luck with that, most of you. And God says, listen, here's what I want you to do. Turn the key. That's right. Turn the key and enjoy the ride. I will never leave you nor forsake. I'll be with you always. I've got a master instructor. Amen. Don't let the enemy tell you I'm not smart enough, I'm not strong enough, I'm not popular enough. It is not about you. It's turn the key for Pete's sakes. There's power in that. So, i got to tell you, I just like this. I don't know why. I mentioned it yesterday to people. Jesus said to the apostles, who were only human, <laughs> you will do greater works than this because I'm going to the Father you will do greater works than this what did he mean? I don't know how it gets greater than raising people around the dead miracles salvation I'm going to tell you the greatest miracle in this world and it's not physical it's when a life is transformed and a mind is made new. Yes. And emotions and bitterness and pain are healed in the name of Jesus. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The, the, the stripes that he took, by his stripes, Peter says, we are healed. Surely he bore our sorrows. Did you know he carried every tear and sorrow and sin and pain of yours on that cross? 2,000 years ago, he took it all so that you could walk in freedom and power. Amen. That's grace, folks. That's grace. And so he says, many signs, I have to tell you. It said they were bringing people. Do you know how much power was on those apostles? They, if they thought if they could just get people, people were healed in Peter's shadow. No, I don't need to take that too far. I can't explain all that. But I will tell you that when Peter and John went into the temple, outside the temple and a man was begging and Peter said, looked at him and said silver and gold have I none but such as I have give I unto you and he took the paralyzed man by the head and said rise and walk and he did um, an old church father in the Catholic church a man I love to read St. Thomas Aquinas a brilliant defender of the, the truth of God that God exists but St. Thomas Aquinas was standing outside the Vatican, obviously, a long time ago. And, and one of the people there, one of them turned to him, and they were carrying bags of money into the uh, Vatican. And, and the person turned to St. Thomas so proud, he says, Aren't you glad? The days where we say silver and gold have I none are over. And St. Thomas said, so are the days in which we say, rise up and walk. Right. We've got fancy structures. We've got beautiful things. We've got great programs. We've got phenomenal music. We've got flashing lights. 
But where are the days of saying, rise up and walk? I've got to have that. I can't live without it. I want to be a part of the people that hunger for that. That when you run into, into a friend that is overwhelmingly in difficult shape, you run into a friend that has influenced you. So you don't have to run in fear. This person has too much influence on me. You can change the atmosphere of the room. Wouldn't it be something that you're shadow? And what I mean by that is just the fact that you're present in a place. I told a lady yesterday, we had two people pray. They've been saved a long time that they prayed because they realized they were coming short of what God wanted them to be. And, and one said, yes, I'm really praying that I will know how to avoid conflict. And I said, oh, that's wonderful, but... I'm not going to pray that with you. I'm going to pray that you can walk right into the middle of conflict and the conflict is changed. Amen. Amen. You don't have to avoid it. Your presence, your presence can bring peace in the midst of a storm just yes. like Jesus did. Yes. Amen. 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 Here, this is, well, I'll, I'll get a little further. I don't use a phone to preach. I want to quote something off of it. Let's see. So, with great power. They were all together. Uh, so i got to give you this. Great power. Not a little power. You know, sometimes a little power is just enough to get us in trouble. I, I, was, I was out fishing. I'm a terrible fisher. Fisher man. I'm a terrible fisher. This wasn't recent. This was a lot of years ago. I, I, I had one of the best fish I caught. I said, wow, this is really something. What a walleye in my... Sent a picture to my son-in-law. I said, that's a sheepdog fish or something. I said, okay, sorry. I don't even know what the fish are, except northerns. It's all I can catch. So, but I was fishing years ago with a relative, a lady. And we were on this lake that really isn't that big, and it's certainly not the Sea of Galilee. And we're going along, and I said, let's get back to the cabin. We were up for a week up in the Cloquet area. And I said, let's get back to the cabin. And so... We had a little gas trolling motor, very small, but we had a gas, and we're going on. And, and the wind came up, and the waves come up. And I'm still, you know, I said, man, it's just, it's just taken us a long time to get there. And she looks at me, and she said, didn't we pass that house once? <laughs> I said, what? What? I'm telling you the truth, folks. This is not a lie. The boat was going backwards from the waves, and I had the engine full throttle. <laughs> a little power might be good in little problems, but in the tempests and storms of life, you need great power. Oh, true. <laughs> it was so funny. I did. I finally said, you know what? Let's just go sideways <laughs> towards the shore. <laughs> and let's just go sideways. And then we and we could. I got sideways and then it wasn't quite so rough and we could limp our way to shore. Oh, don't don't let church be like that. No. <laughs> Please. And and the reason I say a little power is because I went out just this week for half a day to my brother's place, try to get away there. And, and there's nothing like having a motor you can't depend on. Mm. It, I got it started, and it's running great. And it's a Honda, so it should really be good. <laughs> but I don't care what the name on the motor is, it's whether it runs or not. <laughs> and I, and I, he said, I think it's just flooded, just get it out. So I did get it out. And I ran it right, now we're good. And I started to troll, and then I caught something, and, and so I, I didn't shut it off, I put it in neutral, and all of a sudden it died. And I couldn't get it started. Uh -oh. Do you know in this big, heavy metal, whatever that boat is, you know what it looks like with oars to come across <laughs> against the waves and try to roll back to shore? Oh. And I had to. And he said, well... I got it started again on shore. He said, well, it sounds good now. I said, I don't care how it sounds now. I want to know what it does out there, and I'm not taking any more chances. Yeah. 
can you imagine? Oh, here, I'll get to my, I'll get to my post. I gotta stop. I gotta stop staying up and praying. You know, after I finish a message at night. Amen. Uh, but I tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> you, you stop, will you? Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see if I can even find it. Praise the Lord, I had it. Oh, well, let's see. Where's the picture of me and my wife? That's not it. How, how did I happen to get Bruce in there? I don't know. Okay, let's see. Well, how did I do that? Oh, there I am. That's me. And there's my lovely wife. Who's still with me, praise God. What a yes. miracle. Okay. So I put out this post. All too often, inviting people to church is like selling them a ticket to a cruise ship and telling them to bring their own oars. <laughs> it's luxurious, it's comfortable, but you're on your own if you're going to go anywhere. I am far more concerned about the power of the engine than I am about the size of the boat to bring people to a new destination in their lives in Christ. Lord, overwhelm us with the manifest presence and power of your Holy Spirit, performing signs and wonders among us that change lives and glorify you. Yes. Amen. 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 Um, I, I, I truly, I truly don't want to go on a, I, I don't want to go on a cruise ship with a two and a half horsepower Mercury. <laughs> it may look okay, but it has no power. Acts 20, 32 says, and now, Acts 20, chapter 20, verse 32 says, and now I commit you to God and the word of His grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all who are sanctified. Hmm. So His grace saves, His grace sanctifies, His grace builds you up, His grace gives you power. Anybody here say, thank you for the grace of God. Amen. 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 Yes. Tell me, tell me, what is grace? Any, any, whatever it is. What is it? Unmerited favor. Unmerited favor. You've been favored in a way that you didn't earn. You don't deserve. You've been taken in. You've been adopted by God. Not because you were an unmerited favor. I've told you people the story several times. <coughs> when my wife, at, we were studying... Greek, you know, together studying layman's Greek and a little bit deeper than that, but, but um, we had our Zodiatus Bibles with every Greek and Hebrew word. They have some, he has some great stuff. He's passed away. Great explanation of Greek words. And, and uh, I have my favorite ones and my wife said, my favorite is grace. Charis. And I said, why? She said, because growing up, I never felt I was the favorite of anyone. But I'm his favorite. Amen. Amen. That's what grace is. That's what grace does. Are you walking in the grace of God or your religious activity or your works? Or are you going through the motions or are you amazed by grace every morning. How much time are you in this? You know what? I just saw a good thing from an evangelist friend of mine. He said, I know people do devotions at different times, but the Psalms is filled with starting your day, trying to start your day with something here. Your day will go different if you can start a day. And I'll tell you what else. End your day with this if you can. You'll have less nightmares. Start your day with Jesus. End your day with Jesus. And you know what you'll find? You'll be going through your day with Jesus. And, 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 and try to do it, not just with a devotional, though I love devotionals. There's Oswald Chambers. And there's a lot of different devotionals and things like that. 
I know that our daily bread has things that can be great. That's fine. If you don't have a Bible and you say, I just don't have a good Bible, see me. I'll get you one. I promise. We'll get you a Bible. We've got Bibles back there. New Testament old and the full Bible. And you get deep into that, we'll get you another one. I don't want anyone to go without this. It's our foundation. Um, so, <clears throat> let's keep going. I like this. We'll go back to Romans 6, 19. Paul says, I'm using human analogy and so on and so forth. And then he goes on and says, um, for, in, in 19, the second part, for just as you offered the parts of yourselves as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater lawlessness, so now offer them as slaves to righteousness, which results in sanctification. I don't know if all of your Bibles say slaves, but a lot of even the newer translations as well as the old ones do. It is a bond servant. It is someone, you know, we, there were slaves that were set free. You're free to go. Slavery is over. And that's good. And then there were slaves that actually, they never felt like slaves. They, they actually liked the homes they were in. They liked their job. I mean... And so they said, please, when they got cut loose and said, You're, you can go now, we don't own you anymore. And there were some, and this is all throughout the Bible, and there were some that said, would you, would you keep me? Could I stay and work for you? I love working for you. So when it uses the phrase, do loss, slave, a bondservant to Jesus, I'm binding myself to him. I'm chaining myself to him. I want to serve him. I don't want to go out there. I was a slave to sin once. Oh, how different it is to be a slave. To, I'm chained to righteousness. Amen. Jesus is my righteousness, but I'm chained to Jesus now. And you know what? Sometimes it may seem like it's a little problem for him. But he's, he's bringing me with him. Because <laughs> I'm chained to him. So he says, but here's what I like about it. I better hurry up. He says... Um, that you are now, you can offer all of your members, all of you, here's what you do, offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, which will set you apart and sanctify you. So let me give you an illustration of that as I think about it. And I've got to tell you something. The most passionate sinners... <coughs> The most extreme sinners I've often found out are the most passionate saints. They're the most extreme saints. It, it's in the Bible. Somebody that is, has really knows what it is to be lost and hopeless and in bondage and chains of sin is so excited when they step out of it. If, you, if, you, if you've not recognized and you just think, well, I've always been pretty good. I haven't been that bad. Let me give you an example. You hear me talk about the Samaritan woman. Oh, I love that narrative. John 4. The Samaritan woman. Jesus meets her. And I'm not going to go into the story. It's a whole sermon, but here's the deal. The Samaritan woman, here she had so many things. She was an expendable woman because she had everything going against her. But she became a top evangelist for Jesus. Don't think that you just get saved so you can maintain and get to heaven. That's right. You are saved to save to see others come into the kingdom. Yes. Christianity is never about me only. It's out there. Can't help myself. I gotta share this news. Can't help myself. How do I witness him? You should be in the place where you can't help yourself. I told you many times, like the disciples, they say, would you please shut up? No more of this Jesus stuff. And they whip them. They say, now, go and keep your mouth shut. And they go and they say, sure thing. 
Man, let me tell you about Jesus. <laughs> and they say, what are you doing? And they said, we can't help it. We're possessed. We can't help but speak Jesus. How could you shut up about a life that's brand new? You were hell bound and now you're heaven bound. Amen. How can you shut up about that? So that woman, I was just listing things the other day. She was the wrong gender. Women have no prominence in that society. She was the wrong gender. She was the wrong religion. Samaritans were dogs to the Jews. She was the wrong race for status. She was the wrong reputation for love. Five husbands that left her. And you know what I thought? I read the end of the story. Go read John 4 and read the end of the story. I want that woman on my church board. She wins a whole town. You know where else Jesus talks about it? Do you remember Simon giving Jesus dinner? And he's sitting there. And Simon's thinking, and this woman breaks, she crashes the party. And she starts weeping all over Jesus' feet. And she's weeping all over his feet, and it, it's washing her feet. And the tears are flowing so heavy. And she takes her hair and she wipes his feet with her hair. And Simon is saying to himself, but Jesus read his mind. He said if he knew, if only Jesus knew what kind of woman she was, he wouldn't allow that. And Jesus said, Simon, let me tell you something. Simon was religious. I'm going to just give him my, my interpretation. Simon, you, you never miss church. You're, you're around all the time. You, you look good on the outside but you really haven't ministered to me. You, you didn't wash my feet. Oh yeah, but I sang songs. I taught Sunday school. I'm not talking that. I'm talking what is your intimacy with Jesus Christ? The woman did not crash the party for a meal. She, they were having a banquet. We never hear about her eating. She crashed the party weeping because this Jesus could change her life. Amen. And do you know what? You know what Jesus said? Simon is thinking she's making a fool of herself. She's possessed. Jesus said, Simon, here's the principle. The one that has been forgiven much loves much. <laughs> Samaritan woman. Um, I had a friend say to me, it was when I was in business, I, I think, I'm, I'm, in fact I know now that I think about it, I was not a Christian, but I was, I was one of those people, wasn't living for the Lord, very backslidden, and I was such a great testimony though, because one thing that was good is if I, sat in the bars and had a couple drinks, I could sing Amazing Grace louder than the rest of them, you know. I will tell you the truth. The Bible says, train up a child in the way he should go and when, and when he's old and not depart from it. Amen. It doesn't mean you won't slip away or backslide, but I'll tell you what, you will never get away. That's right. It'll keep coming after you. Good. The grace of God. Amen. It'll never get away. Yeah, I don't care what you're doing. One day it'll just hit you like a hammer over the head. Yes. Amen. That's why keep praying for your kids. That's right. Keep praying for your family. They may go out, but you train them in the way they should go. And when they're old, you never know God. It says when they're old, they will not depart from it. I wasn't that old, but I was not living for Jesus and I was in business and I was sitting with this guy who was very well off and rich and we were having lunch and 
So I don't know what happened, but I shared something about a person whose life was really changed, and it was about a person in, in a church. I wasn't even attending church except to go and, and see my dad because he pastored. And I would drive to Sandstone to a little church. And sometimes there was alcohol on my breath, but that little church loved me. That's right. They kept loving me. Anyway, this guy I was sitting with said, I was telling him about the testimony of this person, how it changed, and he thought he was being, you know, it was sarcastic. He thought he was really being cool. He was really trying to put me down, and that's why I felt for He said, well, listen, no one sings louder in the church choir than the Reformed whore. <laughs> right? Right? Yeah. And you know what? He thought that was really funny, sarcastic, no one sings louder, but let me tell you the truth. I kept thinking about that. And I said, that's true. That's true. I, I, I've seen people that never had a song before. And God has changed them. And they sing louder than anybody. Because they've been changed. Is your testimony a whisper to the grace of God? Do you have laryngitis? <laughs> That's it. Or do we sing loud? Amen? Amen. Amen. We have to have a loud song to the Lord because of His grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. Uh, let's close up the last verse. I mean, I'll just go to 23. There's more. I did say that because of your set apart and you've offered yourselves to righteousness, you now become a weapon in this world. That is in the Greek in the passage. I won't go into it. It says you are now weapons in your world because of that. And so um, it ends up going in the last verse of chapter 6. Romans 6, 23, a very famous verse for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And when you listen to the, to the wording there, the payment of sin, you get paid, you get paid for what you earn. It's wages. Death is your paycheck for sinning. And I'm not talking just physical death. Right. Emotional. There's emotional death long before. There's spiritual death that takes place. You can keep sinning. Keep working at it. I know what your paycheck is. But then he turns around and says, but the gift of God I don't know how to say this. You can't work for this. The gift of God is eternal life. You're either going to get a check or you're going to get a gift. And you go, I didn't do anything for this. And he said, oh, my son Amen. did a lot for this. Amen. It's a gift to you. There was a big payment by him. You see, when you get a gift, somebody paid for it. You get a gift, Jesus paid for it. I did say, I, I, I won't go into this deep now, real quick. What I did say, do you remember last week I told you about the types of sin and I gave you one? I said, there's a difference. Oh, I think that, I think that was when I was talking to Michelle. And I talked about, I said, you could do a certain thing and it would be a sin. And this person could do one and it wouldn't be a sin. They go, what's that about you? <laughs> how can that be? And I said, because of what's sourcing you. And remember how I told that a, a little baby can spill the glass of milk uh, unintentionally? The glass is broke, the milk is spilled. It's not intentional. It's not rebellion. It's immaturity. And then I told you that, that that same kid can slam the glass of milk across it purposely and then you know, right? Yep. Okay. There are some sins of the saints. 
there are bondages that aren't broken. There are addictions that aren't taken care of. You know, every single time that I say the word addiction, the first thing that's going to come to mind is drugs and alcohol. There are addictions. All kinds of addictions besides that. That can pull you away from the presence of God. The Holy Spirit wants to break addictions in our lives. Call them idols, if you will. Anything that captures me more than the singing loud in His presence. And I said there was another kind, and I'll close with this. That way I won't have to come back to this sermon next week. <laughs> Some believers, all of us have a certain amount of programming that's been done. It can be from childhood. It can be all of that stuff. But there's certain programming. I, I mean, let me tell you, unless you really learn and you know, it's, it's, it's not about the heart. It's not rebellion. It's programming of the mind. And that's why Romans 12, 1 and 2 says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing. That's after you've already given your life to Christ. He said, I urge you to present your body as a living sacrifice. Come to Jesus. And then be not conformed to this world. Okay, I'm going to start living different. Okay, but my mind has some old patterns. I've been doing this so long. It's just automatic pilot. You know what it's like. You can drive 30 miles and miss every town. Yes, yes. You don't even look at the street sign. You don't look. You just drive automatically. Sometimes I was driving and I literally drove 30, 40 miles and I didn't know where I was. I, I went through every town I was, you know, and I was like, how did I do that? Because this is so automatic, I can do it in my sleep almost. Yeah. Just jump on the freeway and I'll be there. Programming. Uh, let me tell you one that I didn't know when I was a kid, but I learned. Uh, somebody didn't train me, but when I'm told that there's, a, when I see a fire, what do you do? You throw water on it. Get water. If you see a fire, grab the hose. And if you see a fire, throw water on it. Well, I saw a fire on the stove. Uh -oh. You don't throw water on that. No. But that makes sense every other time. Yeah. That I, I mean, most times. Yeah. But I was programmed, throw water. I threw water and grease and flames were shooting up. I said, that didn't work. <laughs> programmed. This will change your mind. Yes. You may be a child of God, but you find yourself, your song, well, you've got more laryngitis than you do loud. And you just need some programming broken. I mean, some of the programming is pretty common, simple stuff. I'm, I, I'm, I don't know that much about this, so I, I can't share. I don't know much about a car, but I can turn a key. The paralyzed man that was healed had one story to tell. And Jesus, the, the man with the demons cast out, when he cast them into the pigs, Jesus told him to go into ten cities and tell all that God had done for him. He had one story. <laughs> Jesus, your grace, would it become amazing to us? Would you, would you help us to feel the amazement of your grace and the power of your grace? Would you excite me, Jesus? Would you cause me to have a song that's loud? Sing a new song unto the Lord. Help me, Jesus. Help me to have a song to sing. It's hard to sing a song when there's no song. But you are the melody. 
And you are the harmony. And you are the instrument of everything I've ever needed in my life. Help me to sing about you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. amen.